Ray saved the first game, and there's a second person that is saving the day. Uh, as smart, as amazing, and as professional as the original Blueberry, you will only notice that Blueberry got a much darker voice today because Actor is on the campfire chat with me. Actor, welcome in, my friend. I'm also distinctly less German than Blueberry. Uh, some would say that's a benefit, <laughs> some would say that's a curse, whatever. Thanks, Ray, for holding it down for that first match, doing an absolutely phenomenal job. But, you know, out with the old, in with the new, that kind of situation. So I'm going to be here. And it's a hell of a series that I'm able to join for as well. Ariandel versus Eternal. Two very highly rated teams in this tournament. Ariandel right now, third place out of ten. They have gone three and two. They've had some kind of interesting losses to some on paper uh relatively weaker teams such as i believe a uh, cynic uh in the meantime we have a tunnel on the other side and i feel like there are only so many things which i can keep saying about this roster before i just sound like i'm being paid off by nightlight himself right like they are yeah, yeah. They, they, they are five and oh they have not dropped a single set uh, it does th that might happen today. It doesn't look likely that they're going to be dropping a set anytime soon. They are my pick to be winning the whole tournament already, and it isn't particularly close, to be honest. And I mean, as I say, the proof's in the pudding. They've shown a mastery over a wide variety of killers. They've shown phenomenal teamwork, phenomenal 1v1 skill, both on that killer side and that survivor side. Um, and they haven't dropped a single set on account of all of that. It's fair play to them. I simply don't see a world in which Eternal don't take this series in a clean sweep. But I did say that about Sinners last week, and I was proven very, very wrong. A lot of people got very rich off of that Sinners game. Uh, so, hey, mm -hmm. if you really like to gamble, put your money on Ariandel. You'll get a big payout, I guess. And it's clear that I've been wrong before. But it, the mature, kind decision that your parents would approve of would be the Eternal bread for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I agree what you said about sounding like Nightlight paid you for casting over their expected performance. <laughs> because it, it it is just like sometimes I'm not entirely true what we are supposed to say in the campfire chat. As you mentioned, 5-0 and 100% set win ratio. So it sometimes even feels a little bit like um, we are trying to make up a scenario where Eternal would lose. Um, but... This is not one of these, because if there is someone who can make the big surprise, and I know that a lot of people are lurking in the shadows and they are waiting that Eternal's crown is falling. And if it's only for a weekend and everything can, everyone can say, well, finally, we witnessed something that we were not expecting. And Ariandel is third in the standings. They are hunting mm -hmm. Elysium and they are hunting Eternal. They are one win ahead of the other teams. Now, not anymore because some teams played yesterday and took a win already. But Ariandel, considering they only have five games played so far, they are one win ahead of the other teams. So they are outstanding a little bit from the rest of the competitors. So maybe this is enough outstanding today to make it... Um, to make it into a win against Eternal here. Quickly going over the killers because Eternal and Ariandel are also getting ready. Big shout out there for being so fast. Dredge again, Babo, an absolute dredge mm -hmm. expert. We mm -hmm. love him on the on the dredge. If I feel like um comparing dredge and pyramid head actor, if there is one set I see Ariandel taking to push us towards the tiebreaker, then it's dredge. I'd have to completely agree with you. You mentioned it just now that Bubbo is a phenomenal dredge player. Almost uh, single-handedly in our balancing has put dredge up a tier, meaning that some of the stronger killer perks are going to be banned against that killer. Uh, of course, uh, we've just seen a set of that play out uh, with varying different results. A four-man out on one side, a 4k at two gens on the other side. Bit of night and day difference. But, um, I mean, if you're talking about name recognition... And simply going off of that, Ariandel might be one of the few teams that can go band for band with Eternal in that sense. You know, uh, players like Bubbo, Excise, Hardwell, who have that name recognition that the people know um, so well. But then also extremely talented players such as Ipic, La Magic, Arima as well. They are very recognizable names. They can go against some of these... Um, very well-known players such as Dan, Nightlight, Royalty, Zaka from the Eternal side. Uh, so in terms of name recognition, 
Ariando can actually, you know, compete with Eternal on that front. I think if there was any team that was going to be um, popping off Eternal for the time being, that wouldn't be Elysium. You would have to go with Ariandel. It's a lot easier said than done. However, Dredge can... Dredge is often quite good at taking advantage of disorganized teams on account of that Nightfall, where, you know, your actual... Uh, where the 1v1 isn't quite as important as your ability to communicate as a team, uh, keep eyes on the killer wherever they can, keep your positions in order. Um, but that isn't going to be a problem for a team like Eternal. Like, a lot of these players, even when Eternal did go on brief hiatus, even before that, some of these players have been playing together for a ludicrous amount of time. Like, they don't have issues communicating. They don't have lapses in judgment or communication quite like that. And then we also have Pyramid Head as well, which I believe there's been a single set of Pyramid Head this entire tournament thus far. So I could sit here and pretend to know what I'm talking about, but I'll be honest, I have no idea what to expect from that set. Literally none. Yeah, it will be a wild gamble, honestly. So once again, everyone get your points in. Uh, you can win a lot today. We are seeing Dan, Spitz, Royalty and Nightlight. Unfortunately, we had to force Nightlight and Dan to take their hearts someone out because DBD League is not a place where we allow love appreciation it's comp dbd it's serious it's dark it's brutal and there's no love for yeah. anyone um but the players are getting ready interesting to mention as well that bubble was on eternal for a long time actually so bubble might have also an advantage in terms of having experience of how eternal plays he was on that roster himself he knows a little bit of the survivor strategies a little bit of what they are trying to do what they are trying to um, set as a pressure against the opponent team and all of that could fall as an additional puzzle piece towards Ariandel here uh, going into the Midwich Elementary School important to mention as well Dredge is looking absolute dominant here on this on this map we had a lot of games that ended in a 4k so far this season you have so many lockers you can teleport to the nitra can uh, nightfall can really really cause chaos you're not aware even is the killer still above you is he below you uh, which hallway is he coming from is he in a classroom is he outside of a classroom and we're going in live uh, here from the dbd league eternal versus Ariandel eternal on the survivor side nightlight dan royalty and spitz against bubble on the dredge and we see a sloppy coming out so we see his good old strategy or his good old plan teleporting to the lockers taking quick injuries quick injuries is what it's all about but something that i did actually want to pay attention to there's no malthinker's skull from bubbo here that's generally going to be the most popular add-on combination along with this doll which is going to uh increase the duration of the nightfall uh no instead of that we do have the boat key uh, which increases your teleportation speed uh, by 5 meters per second. So definitely looking to catch out some survivors there. But you can't be catching out royalty just like that. It ain't that simple. Uh, it turns out that an intangible concept of hatred is countered quite easily by a small plank of wood. And royalty doing some really good work right now. It is delaying the inevitable. None of these... Um, it's delaying the inevitable, ultimately. None of these uh, loops are going to be particularly good for the survivors because, I mean... Dredge can just shut them down so easily. You really need to be using these safe outs as Spitz is going to do. I also want to bring attention to the face of the darkness that's been bought here. This does not seem like an orthodox pick whatsoever. What is Bubbo cooking right now? Yeah, Bubbo is uh, trying... This is maybe this one piece that he's trying to add to his build. Um that is not expected at the uh, very beginning. It is something that is unique, something that we don't see so often at least. And with these constant screams as an information tool, basically, he will maybe be able to perfection his usual strategy with going so often between the lockers. But to set some pressure and going between these lockers and putting pressure onto Eternal, we would need a down and royalty is just not getting down. Royalty keeps running and running, waits for the perfect moment, chaining it back into the pallet over here. Look at this patience, ladies and gentlemen. He's playing against his own team member and he 
he just stands there like a rock in the beach. The waves can come and come and he just doesn't care. He has iron nerves and is unfortunately being punished oh. with the basement here. But I think okay. he can live with that because there's the first generator and knowing Eternal, that will not be the only generator that we see early on in the trial here. There's the second one. It might even be a third one considering uh, how long this chase was. He has 60% over there. So Eternal once again setting up to be an absolute dominant part in this match here. Spitz leaving the generator early, helping him to not take an injury here as well. We wouldn't be surprised if we see a quick reset and a quick unhook from Eternal here. They're trying to pull back the fourth survivor as quick as they can, especially when Bubble is on the other side of the map. That was unfortunate there. We just saw the killer even placing the Pentimento, so I don't think that Hex Totem is lasting long. Yeah, and something that has actually been pointed out to us, which makes a lot of sense, is oh, if you're in a teleport, okay, never mind there. Every single survivor injured up right now in the darkness as well. Can you think of a worse situation to have to be in? A couple of resets are going to be coming up from downstairs, but with the mangled and the hemorrhage from the sloppy butcher onto all of these survivors, that heal is going to take a very long time. Dan is caught in this small loop here, but this is what we're talking about with all this screaming. Face the darkness. Remember, it applies outside the terror radius, and during when you're in nightfall and you don't have that terror radius, that means that it's going to be constantly procking. Dan, of course, does fall, which means that Hex Darkness is going to be going offline for just a little bit longer, but very well spotted that you can use that for a whole lot of information. And Bubbo, it seemed quite interesting that got the teleport onto royalty, almost seemed like it was a guaranteed down, but didn't actually opt to go for it. Instead, going to be looking around, maybe trying to just, you know, secure the pickup onto Dan instead. Now it's the chance to create some chaos here because we have two injured survivors, one slacked survivor. So if you take any advantage of your locker teleports and pulling something unexpected, um, and putting pressure on the survivor team, then now would be the perfect moment. Royalty already getting reset, so the time or the window of opportunity is shrinking down. Therefore, Dan will be picked up. Two hook stages so far. Nightlight and Spitz meeting up for a reset. Babo picking the hook next to the generator here. That's regressing and next to the Pentimento as well, that's a very smart choice if you're asking me because now you will be um, uh, able to monitor three resources at once. But of course against Eternal you cannot just stand next to the hooked survivor because otherwise they are repairing the entire Midwich Elementary School, even restorating it in the meanwhile and then they will all just leave just casually. So that's not going to be a strategy here. Dan will be rescued and now we are going to work for the tunnel out that might cost the Pentimento here since the survivor downstairs can just rotate onto the Hex Totem. But knowing Dan the man as he's called in the community will have have a long enough run to ensure that but a great teleport back expecting that night that is on the totem and we were right what the strategy of eternal is good that he pushed him off there because basically nightlight now lost time and got no reward for it yeah bubba it seems like has just downloaded the location of every single eternal member which definitely helps when you're trying to lock them all down but is actually keen to be putting this pressure check back on those generators instead of trying to commit onto the down for night uh, it does seem that bubbo's build it's a little more all or nothing than we're used to uh, there's not really been a conceited effort to get that initial tunnel out secure that first kill instead you're trying to split a lot of pressure amongst all the survivors and then force them into making a mistake. Slow the game down, drag it to your pace. The issue is that the Eternal Survivors, they were in a rough spot like about, you know, three, four minutes ago, but they've all recovered now. All that you have to show now from what we had before with a hooked survivor, a slug survivor and two injured, all you have now is just a single injured survivor and then a couple of people screaming in the background, which isn't great pressure as the killer right now. So Bubbo needs to be getting some more injuries, some more downs, some more hook stages, and needs to be getting them quickly. Now we are back on Dan. That's an injury right here. Nightlight is still injured as well. So Eternal switched the strategy a little bit. We have seen them going for the resets earlier. Now they're keeping the survivor injured. Maybe because they realized that it's going a little bit slower on the generator than they were expecting. We are sitting on three remaining generators 
for quite some time now, which proves to us how great Babo is doing at the moment with keeping Eternal under control and defending the generators here. The, that the Pentimento is still in play as well is showing us how much Babo is paying attention to the surroundings and the circumstances next to the survivor team. He is one going for the chases, trying to go for some downs whenever there's the opportunity, like here. And if that's not possible, he stays cool. He's not saying, um, he's not saying, well, this was too much time. He's not saying, well, this is getting tricky. I need to commit to someone. He's staying cool. He takes some additional teleports. He defends some gens. And this is what I love so much about Babo here. And Bubba is putting a lot of faith in the survivors taking their time to heal up after um, after every injury, simply because being injured against a dredge is so dangerous. When you're injured in Nightfall, you are so easy to lock down, so easy to get down. As Bubba tries to return to the hook right now. For the people play is going to be coming out onto Dan, not going to be dying anytime soon. Nightlight is here for the body block, but you can see Bubba is... Well, wasn't interested for a while until realizing Dan is just making a little bit too much distance. And yeah, he's going to be committing to this hook. So it is an extra hook stage, but that isn't on to Dan, which means the kill isn't going to be coming through quickly. And as you can see up top, Royalty is putting some very good pressure into another generator as well. Meanwhile, Dan was just following Nightlight with a flashlight this entire time. Uh, fan behavior, I guess. <laughs> He wants an autograph actor. Sometimes even <laughs> that doesn't? happens inside of Eternal. <laughs> um, maybe Bubba wants an, an autogram of uh, Nightlight as well. That's why he's chasing him down. But we have some more hook stages for hook stages overall now. But slowly but steady, these generators start to get more and more progress and it gets more and more difficult for Bubble to defend them. We're once again on the Pentimento. That's going to be the reset onto Spitz. Nightlight will not go into the reset because they are uh, they need to make sure that they are getting the distance here as Bubble is teleporting towards them. Nightlight holding W, he has quite a head start here, so that will be quite some seconds coming out from Bubble. We are going down, though, to oh, once oh. again pressure someone off the Pentimento. I swear, they have cleansed this Pentimento totem 27 times in the trial so far, and it still stands like a rock bubble with the nice teleport, and then this time, not with a lot of distance and not with enough distance, you will only be able to make it towards this planet over here. Now the mind game that counts a lot. Will we see a possibility to go for the down onto Dan? The answer is no, because Spitz coming in unexpectedly last second and blocking the dredge while mind gaming here. 50-50 palette. Dan unfortunately not taking that. Spitz being around as well. They need to make sure that they are not taking too much risk here. Pentimento totem for once not being touched by Eternal. Maybe they just gave up on it at this point and they are living with the fact that 20% of slowdown will be applied. Then going on to the shoulder here, that's going to be hook stage number five right in the courtyard. So we have a lot of access, access to both halves of the Midwich Elementary School and the 3 we one coming out as well. So it's so good now that we are achieving this because Eternal's gen pressure will be way less. Yeah, and Bubba has been protecting this last Pentimento like it's his own, like it's his own child, you know? Like, it, it's been nothing but teleporting back to that Pentimento, making sure it's safe right now. It's just going to be teleporting right back, checked on the Pentimento briefly, realizes it's still up, and now is going to be using the remainder of this Nightfall to hunt down the other survivors. Injured through onto both Nightlight and Royalty right now. Spit's still relatively fine for the time being, but... The interception on royalty is really good right now from Bo, but again, not committing right now. Realizes that these gens are what really matters, needs to be spending time to, you know, take care of each of them. Most importantly, take care of that damn Pentimento totem. I think Bubbo's developed like a serious emotional attachment to this totem at one time, but upon seeing royalty screaming and seeing that aura for a brief moment, the priorities shift massively, and now we have locked out both of the injured survivors at once. Bubbo putting on an absolute clinic right now. Not even necessarily in like looping ability or anything like that, but just in finding out these survivors, waiting for the power to get back or you can try and make 
another stab at this one. Firecracker, it was a nice idea from the Nightlight, but unfortunately, Bubbo has a little bit too much wherewithal to be blinded by that, and that's another hook going to be going the way of the signature Dredge player in DVD League. That is not how you're meant to hit Bubbo, but that's okay. Yeah, it's try starting to be a struggling adventure for Team Eternal here. Nightlight going back on the hook as well. He has been here before. That's the second stage, therefore 60 seconds away from a 2v1 scenario. Babo absolutely shining here. It's his absolute perfection on the dredge that is allowing him to chain together generator pressure, Pentimento defense for quite However. some time in the trial and then now going on the necessary hook stages. Eventually, Pentimento uh, left the trial here, but um, with Eternal being so busy with that totem throughout the trial, also they definitely had to sacrifice some percentages on the gens there. Nightlight will reach the window in time. Royalty is around, potentially taking a hit. We have seen that with Spitz and Dan earlier. So uh, Royalty here giving Nightlight a little bit of assistance, but unfortunately Nightlight is not able to use that to make it back towards the window. Royalty will take the down because Nightlight would be the sacrifice right here. I don't think that Bubba is too disappointed about that you're just taking the hook stage you do not expect the final generator to come out yet because last time we checked there was not enough progress in it so far yeah that's going to be 50% only on to Spitz generator you can teleport over there so good calculation for Bubble here and now you have seven stages more than half time and Bubble will feel better and better Bubba is feeling better, but maybe this gen it did reach about 70% when all was said and done. Maybe you're getting to a point where things are just a little bit scary. Definitely not for the duration of this nightfall, as you are going to be getting back into the basement. <laughs> and it's a 50-50. Tried to make it a 50-50 at least, but definitely saw Nightlight hopping in that locker. And that's going to be another kill here. Coming out for Bubbo, member of Eternal, being lost right now. And the pressure is just going to come right back to his generator. You know that it's the only one that's super well progress right now. Fix is, you know, a pretty valuable target right now. If you wanted to, let's say you wanted to uh, get that kill, you can just kind of hook Spitz, leave him there, and you know that you're guaranteed 11 stages. Ideally, you want 12, and that's where you would slug for a little bit longer, which is the more likely option here. But with both survivors injured, only one generator with any realistic shot of getting done and two lockers with no remaining locks right next to it and face the darkness who's constantly going to be tracking one of these survivors down at all times it's a pretty untenable position for Ariane Dell to be in sorry for Eternal to be in yeah, and I think it's also a situation that Eternal is not used to. Um, I need to watch out that I'm not getting too hyped about someone dominating, or not dominating maybe, but keeping Eternal under control for once. But it's certainly not a situation Eternal is used to. And I always ask myself, how are they practicing these situations? Because you will find nobody to scrim that is putting you in a very, very bad spot where you have to constantly recover. And in the past, we have seen that when Eternal is with the back to the wall and when they are being pushed from this dominant survivor team deciding what's happening in the map to this we have to make a comeback that they actually started to struggle a little bit because it is a situation realistically that Eternal is not used to and this is something that Babo can use to his advantage now. Royalty and Spitz are both injured. They haven't met for the reset just yet. They um, are scattered throughout the Midwich Elementary School and they might try something sneaky or try to set up one of the survivors for an end gameplay here. This would be also possible because 4k1 is not a rare win condition uh, on the Midwich Elementary School. So having a 4k1 and a 4k1, but Eternal with an end game escape would actually break a potential tie into the favor of Eternal. So that would be a chance. Unfortunately, we are aware where Spitz is locating because they were just meeting up for the reset. So I'm more than sure that this is going to be a clean 4k on one generator remaining and that deserves the best shout out thank you respect i don't know how to call it but babo definitely nailed it this game
Yeah, Bubbo, I mean, it's, it's what we expect from Bubbo playing the dredge uh, on mid, on uh, Midwich. It's always going to be a pretty sublime performance. There is the brief possibility of some RNG that comes through. Um, Midwich is one of the maps where you cannot set where the hatch is, uh, but Royalty hasn't actually been able to crawl all the way down, and Spitz isn't going to be dying in time for Royalty to even get the hatch. Unless... Uh, Unless by some miracle Spitz able to kill themselves on the hook quickly enough, uh, Royalty is able to find the hatch, which isn't going to be on the top floor. It can't be on this map. Uh, then it's just going to be a clean 4k1, as you say. Very well played here from Bubbo. Strong performance, but it's not like Eternal are going to take this lying down. It is, as you say, this is quite often a draw condition uh, for, the, for the dredge set on Midwitch. And whether it's even able to be, you know, improved upon by the Killer of Eternal, that has yet to be seen. Yeah, absolutely. And Eternal has to prove that they are able to deal with this. Because it's not only the survivor side where they are under pressure and had to make a comeback. It's also in the entire set now that their killer basically needs to go for a 4k2. And one thing is certain, when you have a dredge like Bubble, on the killer side, well, then your survivor side will not be bad against the dredge. They might be tired of dredge because they have to play against Bubbo so often so he can practice. But you one hell for sure are not bad or weak on the survivor side on the dredge. So this is Ariandel's set. Honestly, oh, still a surprise why the uh, dredge is not being banned against Ariandel. It wasn't banned by Eternal. <laughs> it wasn't banned by some other teams. Maybe it's still not on the radar or the teams say, well, he might be a good dredge. We are a good dredge as well. Well, if Eternal has a good dredge is something we will find out. We will show you a highlight video that we have put together, a new one, if I'm not mistaken. The shout out for that goes to Savannah putting that together in the background. Uh, we will switch the sides and we will be right back. And after Bubbo put in such a clinic, it is going to be Zaka. I mean, if there's anyone that could go band for band on the M1 killers with Bubbo, it, it's got to be Zaka, right? Going with the build which we are more familiar with is more of a known quantity in the dredge set. Your Ruin Undying plus your Malfinker's Skull combos very well with the Sloppy Butcher. It means that survivors get injured and they stay injured, and as they get more injured, it charges Nightfall even faster gets closer to that power spike bubbo going to be hounded down right now zaka looking for a little bit of revenge after what happened in that last set zaka actually not going for that pallet drop is just going to be eating the hit instead to we'll see how this decision pans out here does have the safe pallet here to be using to buy a little bit of extra time in this chase right now meanwhile every single other survivor from the side of ariandel is split on three generators the perfect situation as well bubbo also doing a pretty good job of not running the killer into any of these gens the communication is clear is on point this is a fairly weak loop bubbo simply doesn't have to win at this loop just needs to make time but instead can just dunk the pallet right onto just dunk the pallet right onto zaka's head and make so much distance off the back of that i think zaka's actually just gonna be opting to drop chase entirely and instead go and do a little bit of harassment upon these generators. That means that the Hex Ruin is going to be working through a little bit, and when that does eventually get cleansed, there is going to be hell to pay with a Pentimento for the trouble of these survivors. Even more slowdown, because they can't deal with Ruin forever. They have to get rid of it at some point, right? But then they'll have to deal with the Pentimento. And once the Pentimento is gone... Sorry, once the Pentimento is up, they'll then have to spend a little bit of extra time even getting rid of that. Try to interrupt Hardwell on the generator, but Hardwell's hands just a little too meticulous and dexterous for that one, fixing up that generator in no time at all. And Arima going to be fighting through the injury right now to keep the generator pressure up. This seems like an incredibly strong start for the survivors right now. Yeah, it looks absolutely incredible. Exactly what you need after Bubble has played such a beautiful trial for Oriental here. Then you are expecting kind of that your survivor team can meet up with that. The IKEA loop is not going to be successfully played by Zaka here. We are wasting a lot of time from the side of the survivors, sacrificing both pallets though. 
but um, it is all for the benefit of the gens and we are still mind gaming around here we really don't want to give access to the courtyard without taking the injury here so access will have to take it is holding w trying to go for it will we see the teleport into the locker right after the pallet the answer is no not coming out exercise going up the stairs not going for the vault right here he's aiming for the next pallet and that's going to be the very interesting down here zaka downloaded the new dlc for the mm -hmm. dredge is playing as the black fog here ladies and gentlemen you can order that very soon don't be afraid zaka will not be the only one having that mysterious key for the steam store but exercise will have the first hook stage into the game two generators are already completed great pressure by ariandel we might see a third generator coming out very soon here um exercise chilling for a moment hardwell is going to set up actually the survivors are taking time to rotate to the correct generators that are away from the hook stage to drag the uh game a little bit throughout two different poles here. Zaka, just like Babu in the previous game, managed to take the hook stage next to a progressing generator, being able to uh, watch two resources here. And that is something that will definitely fall into his advantage here later on. Interesting that Zaka is actually going for the camp out here. Obviously trying to also get some pressure on the other gen as well. Babu actually does get caught out, but is just going to tag the injury and then run away not going to be wanting to deal with the exchange happy to let exercise hang for a little bit longer even go to the second stage right now the, the the survivor's priority right now doesn't seem to be doing anything about this ruin undying you can probably predict to the arima yeah arima is going to be the one working on a gen in the meanwhile as is bobo as well it seems like what they're waiting for is just to let Excise hang as much as possible, and then Hardwell comes in for the 1-1 one, one exchange there, and then buy a little more time for Excise to stay alive there. And Arima knows that, you know, with Zucker just camping the hook out, that Ruin Undying is going to be essentially useless in that gen. You can just bully a gen through that regression. It's not really going to be mattering, and hopefully there's enough time for Bubbo to do that as well for the side of Ariandel. Very closely looking at a single generator being left. We gotta look at well, how is Zaka's three gen? Uh, how are the locker placements? Are they near enough? And that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a little bit of a brutal body block that's gonna be coming through. Not allowing hardware access through that small door and exercise. Well, I hope you had fun playing Dead by Daylight today, bud. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a minus rep onto Zaka's profile right there. Very interesting to see that Zaka um, decided to go for the full tunnel out right there. He needs he must be really confident that he has enough time. Usually we are always worried when we do see the full camp because uh, the survivor teams usually then punishing it with a lot of completed generators. But here we have also seen that a lot of survivors tried to move in, going for the unhook. So Zaka knew that not all three survivors oh. are currently working on the gens. Arima taking a very unfortunate quick injury here as well we are having 80 percent on this gen but bubble is being pushed off and hex ruin and undying are still in the trial and they are doing a lot of work for our killer here and against our survivor team so we kind of need to take care of that if we want to take the necessary progress two injured uh, one injured survivor here being protected now we are all injured actor that means risk yeah, things are looking really bad for the spies right now. As you say, all of them injured up, so they cannot stay safe for a long time. They have to heal, but because their priorities shifted from completing, from getting rid of that rune on dying, instead trying to bully the gens through it, they weren't able to succeed. They just weren't able to do it, Diet. And so now they're all injured and they don't even have any generators to show for it. This is a really horrific situation, especially if Zarka's able to keep getting these nice TPs through. Bubbo is trapped in a corner, is not going to be long for this world at all. And if Hardwell gets intercepted in trying to pick up a Rima, it is absolutely over for this survivor side. And that's going to be Eternal miraculously taking another set as miraculously taking another set as they have done time and time again. 4k2 here would be insa insanity. If Zaka somehow pulls a 4k2, that would be absolutely incredible. And it would also set the tone in such a negative way against Ariandel here because Dredge is your set. You just played a very, very good trial against Eternal 4k1. Incredible result. And it's still not enough 
to win this and how are you then finding the confidence for the second set here so it would be really really bad if that's actually happening arima hartwell and bubble they need to find a way here but as we said and dying still in the trial ruin still in the trial so whenever they are leaving a generator they are immediately punished here reset doesn't seem to be the option bubble would go into second stage as well therefore they are going for the unhook but it might be just another trade adding the hook stages so i'm a little bit clueless what's going to happen here but we need uh, pressure on the gens somehow somewhat a magical turn is needed yeah but zaka is in such a good position these lockers are in great spots to be constantly bullying out these generators you could see that hardware was trying to put progress onto that one there force ourselves the tie instead of the straight loss but it just didn't work out with a Rima also not going to be lasting very long at all in this chase unless he's able to get into this room does have a pallet to work with but it's never really a good plan right now Bubba putting so much pressure onto this corner generator as well you have to think is there enough time is it going to be completed here from the spies because if so then we have almost certainly a tie coming through and Bubba at the last second yes okay is just barely able to get that done in the killer's face right now Zaka not going to be happy about that one at all the survivors need to complete another gen for the win what they just chuckled out that one holy hell no you're not chases the lobby how is this happening? We were just talking about a 4K on two generators and out of nowhere we are having all generators completed. Not just one additional gen for the tie. We have two more generators. How, actor? I, I don't know how to continue casting because I have no explanation for this. Zaka's as boomed as we are. Look, look bro, bro's just staring at walls, considering his life choices, thinking maybe I should go back to college or something after this one. Jesus, you just... That was insane. I, like, we saw the gen progress, like, that, we saw the gen progress, Bubba was working on their own gen, which was not, which ended up being finished, and the other gen up top was at, what, maybe 50%, and in the time that was bought, just by Bubbo, I guess, you know, sitting in a corner for a few seconds extra, and Zaka maybe taking slightly odd pathing to get that down, bought enough time, just enough time for the gen up top to be doubled up as well. Phenomenal play from Ariandel, and well, it could be the start of something magnificent. Eternal's 100% win record gone, dashed, out of here. No longer are they undefeated in sets. Already you have to give big props to Ariandel for taking that. But you know, why take just a step when you can take the entire damn match? We're going to be back after a very short break. After that, we're going to be seeing whether Ariandel are able to completely upset or whether Eternal have some tricks up their sleeve. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with the Pyramid Head, and we are going to find out who deserves the second set point in Eternal versus Ariandel. If you just joined, an absolute special thing happened. Eternal is no longer on a 100% set win ratio. Instead, oh. they have dropped a little bit. Hartwell, unfortunately, though, not starting that confident, is taking the first injury pretty early into the trial. And for Eternal now, it's important to find back into the dominant game. Play, and that's how it works. What a great okay. anticipation, Hartwell just holding W there right into the power. First down coming out almost instantly. We just have a few percentages on the gens here. Acta, it seems like Eternal is not going to accept that lost set. Yeah, Zaka really not happy about what happened on that last dredge set, so decided to just kill Hardwell, which is certainly one of the ways of taking out your anger. Not what my therapist would recommend, but you know what? If it works for Zaka, it works for Zaka. Who am I to judge? Uh, it's it's this is a killer mostly decided by the one v ones. There is some degree of strategy with the torment trails and whether you end up walking into those, or whether you end up getting caged, whether a final judgment can come through. But realistically, this killer isn't one with an absurd amount of map pressure or anything such as that. But it's just a really strong chaser. So it's about the 1v1s. You just win as many 1v1s as possible. If you're Zaka, you hit as many of these punishment of the dams as you can. And maybe you can get somewhere. Going for a couple of blind shots onto Rima. You definitely bought yourself 
some time and space to do this, given you're very quick early down onto Hardwell. But you can't be really going for these blind shots 24-7. We are circling back and again around the truck here, trying to get it down onto Arima. Zaka, with his dangerous M2, has already got quite some quick injuries and downs oh, right wow. here. And Arima going to phase it down as well, not even wasting a single second there. Zaka trying to get the down as quick as possible and it works out there for second hook stage. Uh, still on five generators remaining. Pop goes, the weasel will be applied on this generator over here to the left of the hook. So that's going to be a little bit of a setback for the survivors. They don't make that in time, unfortunately. One generator has been repaired, so that survivor is potentially now rotating towards the unhook, getting Arima back into the trial and working with four survivors across the gens here. A second one might come out very soon, but we have to leave the generator now since the magic is going into the chase and he's injured as well. So that's very likely not going to be the longest run. We will need to have some very nice juicing here from the magic M2 coming out from Zaka again. Is it successful this time? The answer is no. This is what team Ariandel needs right now. They need to dodge a third one. The magic with a comeback here. And you can see that the magic is slowly trying to get further and further away from this loop, but the extra range that that pyramid head has to deal with is going to be making that more of a struggle and has actually stepped into the torment trail here and going down as well, meaning that a quick hook can be coming through if opted to be used. Yes, it will be happening right there. Interesting, a lot of uh, a lot of survivors, it seems like, would rather kick their own dog in the face than step in a pyramid head's torment trail. Uh, it's just very deadly for you to go into there. It puts you at very serious risk of just being, you know, deleted from the lobby uh, instantly, which is certainly not ideal if you're trying to win as a survivor. Uh, so what happened from the magic there, it seemed stepped in more on accident. Uh, it was a small piece in the very core. You can see right now, like, yeah, the magic would rather just go down to this M1 than even consider running through this pallet and maybe extending the chase for a little bit longer instead of stepping in that torment trail. Now, two hooks, the magic is going to be the golden goose to one to look out for, but the gen pressure is pretty good here. If you're able to get two gens completed here before the death of the magic, you're feeling not too bad as an Ariandel survivor, especially considering how rough your early game was. Yeah, considering the early game, you made such a good comeback on the survivor side. And if you would make it all the way down to one gen remaining, I think that is something you can work with. In a 3v1 scenario, we have this generator done 50% on another one. So if the magic doesn't stop serving the juice, we might have all gens done very soon. We also have to let the magic go. Potentially, Zaka realizes now that it takes too long to get the execution onto the magic here. Instead, we would rather find Arima exercise especially Exercise or Hardwell to get some additional hook stages right here. Rotation of Hardwell ready to take over the generator in case Exercise will be in the upcoming chase, but Zaka has to leave away checking on the other gens. I feel bad for our killer. Zaka needs to split at the moment and he needs to be at three locations at the same time because Ariane will manage to drag the generator uh, across the entire Wreckers yard. It's, uh, it's such a huge triangle that Zaka has to deal with here. So this is something that really, really goes into the advantage of Ariandel. Here, Zaka returning back to this generator. He might need to spend some time next to it after a kick to make sure that at least 10% of regression coming in. But if you do that, spending these 15 seconds, that would be including the travel time 25% over on the other generator that is towards the 50% mark. So it's an absolute difficult situation here for Zaka. You're defending this gen, you're bringing it down closer to zero, and in the meanwhile, the survivors just peacefully repair the other generators. So what we need is a few M2s, something like this, something Jesus. fast, something quick onto Arima. A second one would be needed having it down. Then you can go for the slug at the potential end game that is coming through in a minute. But balanced landing is going to save the day for Ariandel here. A little bit Arima will be on a little bit of a longer run. How long? is the question there. How many seconds will be added and will that equal the final generator? That's going to be the foot of Arima. Barely missed and that's a huge setback for Zaka into generator number five. Ladies and gentlemen, Ariande, will they take the crown from Eternal forcing them into a loss today?
Yeah, I mean, Lamadic is in the corner and Zaka... Zaka just isn't going to be killing the magic here. Interesting, not entirely sure what that's about. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it is going to be the three man out. And if the magic is able to just run all the way over to this exit gate, then even possibly the four man out as well. Unless, no, Zaka's actually just going to be holding this sh uh, shack, uh, sorry, holding the hatch at shack in the middle. Does one seem one. to actually want to... <laughs> They're having the 1v1 at Shaq, guys. They're having the 1v1 at Shaq. The, the, the gentleman's agreement, I suppose. The Magic trying to make a run all the way to the escape, but it's not going to be. So that's going to be, you know, at least one more hook stage for Magic. That no one escapes death, being basically cosmetic at the end of the day. I mean, like, Zaka played some of those chases pretty well, but you could see it was so hungry for chases that, to be honest, he just forgot about the gens. I saw... Zero uses of Pop Goes the Weasel that game. I saw one eruption kick, which never came through because no survivor went down within the time that it was used. Uh, no Ed was useless, so it was only really corrupt. And playing yeah. with a single perk doesn't seem to be that great. On a map like this, you need to be... Your map pressure isn't great as a killer, but... Uh, sorry, as a killer such as Pyramid Head... But you do need to be focusing on the gens at least a little bit, and Zaka seemed to forget about that. Yeah, I mean, the plan was clearly to get the hook stages and the downs. This is what the build is around for, right? Because Pop, you want to have the downs from the early get-go, and he had that. If this chase with the magic wouldn't have come in in the mid game, he had the hook stages needed for the pop goes to weasel. He had the downs needed for a potential eruption benefit in the mid game, and then came the magic. And then it ended because then the magic managed to turn Zaka's build from having the hook stages and having the downs into running after the survivors for too long. And this is also showing us that you should never give up in comp DBD because one chase in the mid game, one great showing can just change everything. And for Zaka's defense, to make it fair, Pyramid Head is still a relatively weak killer considering yeah. we have a nurse, we have a spirit. So if the survivors are juicing and they are not making a mistake and they are not giving you something, to work with, you will just run after them. And this is what happened here. So um, the responsibility, not 100% laying on any mistake of Zaka here. It was really just Ariantel not giving the space. But this is how you win matches, playing perfect on the survivor side. Now it would be one more time playing perfect on the killer side, beating these six stages, getting seven or spread across four survivors. And ladies and gentlemen, we will switch the sides and we will see you again on the Wreckers Yard in just a moment. And right now, Eternal, they are staring down the barrel of a gun right now. It's a untenable position for them to have to be in. And Bubbo has actually brought along Rancor for just an easy kill onto the Obsession Nightlight in this case right now. I mean, if, if you're Eternal, first of all, you need to complete all the generators. Then you need to get, like, at least two, three people out. It's, it's such a rough spot to be in. You need some of these first chases to be absolutely insane and Bubbo is going to have a lot more passive regression with the hex ruin we mentioned before that you don't have great map pressure as a pyramid head so something like the ruin can be beneficial at least in the very early game um we saw that when zaka was playing did bring that pop goes the weasel but never really used it to be so this full end game build right now is going to do absolute wonders for <laughs> what the hell? Daniel, what the hell? What the hell was that? I give up. I'm, I'm letting you talk. <laughs> That's very kind. I'll take over from here. Zaka going on to the hook here. Hook stage number one coming out and that's how you want to start on the side of Ariandel. We have a few hook stages that we need to accumulate here on the Rackers Yard. We are Find and needing the half time for killer around the six stages mark, depending okay. on how many fresh hooks we have. But if for the people coming in, Zaka will go on a longer run. He's healthy now and he is going to make it as fast as he can. Then, therefore, making 
the distance towards the end uh, edge map filler here, but that's not going to be a long run then going on to the hook. That's an unfortunate setback, but we have some gen pressure. We can work with that. Yeah, there is some gen pressure to work with. Bobo not actually opting to use that cage there, just going to be putting him on the hook instead, saving that cage for maybe a more special occasion later on down the line. Uh, maybe something to do with the fact, ideally you wouldn't really be hooking down here. Dan is the obsession, and you do have Rancor if you're Bubbo, uh, so it's not really ideal. You go for the M2 there, very, very cheeky, Bubbo. Might have to settle for the M1 instead, which is going to do you the trick, at least for the time being. But you have to wonder how much Bubbo wants to be pressuring out these gens versus keeping Dan on this hook nice and locked down. With such a strong endgame build, Honestly, you kind of have the concept where you might just want to... You have the idea where you might just want to camp one survivor to death, tunnel a single survivor to death, and then rely on your strong endgame to get your insta down and get a whole bunch of extra hook stages at that point. And then it wouldn't really matter the fact that you've given up a lot of gens in the mid game, provided that you're able to get that kill through. But ideally, you would just, you know, send down right to the Undertakers right now. But Dan, not going to let that happen too easily. Indeed, and Dan, the man going on to a longer run here. Hopefully this time we need almost one or two minutes of a run here to get all the pressure back onto the generators and not bring it too close towards True. the wind condition. Usually we would say it's kind of fine to have this many hook stages so far, but we need to keep in mind the wind condition. That was really, really not the greatest and puts a lot of pressure and a lot of expectations oh, okay. onto our killer here. Royalty coming in, taking an injury and allowing Dan to go on a little bit of a longer run here. We want the tunnel out. We need to make sure though that that we are not over committing towards Dan because Dan seems to be relatively unstoppable now. Yeah, did also force the run to actually get Nightlight off of their generator as well. So more pressure is going to be coming onto Dan. Will finally be falling. Took quite a long time for Bubba to accomplish that and is going to pop them on the hook as well. All the other survivors are injured right now. Was that, was that head on attack? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you've got to credit a total for trying, right? It certainly doesn't hurt. Every survivor is now injured right now. I'm going to be resetting in the corner. Yeah, every single survivor is going to be resetting. Uh, Bubbo looks happy to just kind of stay here and camp down to death. Realizes that th because those survivors are going to be healing up, that's time they spend not pressuring out the generators. So you can camp down almost to death. It's actually going to be changing his mind, however. Waited for the survivors to heal up before then pressuring them out, before then going back to Dan. I mean, you can keep pressure here, have two hook stages, look behind a tree if you really, really want to. It, it seems like Dan is going to die at the end of the day. I hope you enjoyed playing the game today, right? Then the end game build comes in with that Noed. And suddenly, Nightlight, Zaka, and Royalty all look like prime targets. And I believe just a single fresh hook onto either Nightlight or Royalty. Uh, Dan will be the fourth hook stage upon death here. Nightlight or Royalty dying on hook will be three stages. And that will be seven hook stages. And that will secure Bubbo and Ariandel the win. That will be crazy indeed. And we are not even with the time pressure right usually we are talking about the end game when we are doing calculations like this and the survivors are about to leave the trial and then you need to make sure what fresh hook do i need to get three additional stages to make it to seven but here we have two generators that are yet to be completed in the back pocket so we are kind of vibing we have additional time we can maybe even lose one survivor during a chase and instead decide to commit to someone else so we have all this potential on the side of Babu here and that should give him a really really good feeling and also bringing up quite some confidence we see a very very early pallet drop that is more than understandable because you really don't want to hand out additional injuries here towards the killer therefore sacrificing the pallet early and then leaving the area is a good decision royalty with a 50 percent generator leaving super early as well there we can see the good coordination and communication of team eternal um 
basically Eternal cannot take any risk anymore and any injury will from now on feel like an entire hook stage. They need to pull back early, they need to be really careful where they put the percentages in, into what generator, when they are approaching these generators, not being too risky there as well, to not have an unexpected down. Um, but for Babo, it will be the difficult decision. If you would only stay between the gens and allow the survivors to do that, then you will be in a difficult uh, spot as well. So giving up the gens and taking a fresh hook to camp yeah. is also an understandable move here. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you just need to get a hook and then camp it to death right now. Uh, looking over the last stream, for some reason, I thought there were six hook stages. There were only five. Zaka was only able to get five hook stages when they played Pyramid Head. A single hook onto anyone here, and then a camp out to death, will be the win here for Bubbo. And Ariandel will 2-0 Eternal in, like, the upset of the century, I suppose. This is the same Ariandel roster who has lost to teams who are about 7th, ninth even in the standings, taking down the top dogs in dominant fashion right now. Nightlight isn't dead yet, however. There is still a brief potential window of opportunity here for Eternal to perform that kind of insane miracle that we know they can accomplish. But, I mean, even with Zaka getting injured up, that miracle looks less and less likely by the moment. Last gen is going to complete it. Hope is going to be coming through. This is going to be a rough chase through onto Nightlight oh, because they God. are the one with the speed as well. But are you here to take a... No, you're here to take a hit, Royalty! Oh, no, you can't be letting that happen. Royalty is going to be going on a hook for their trouble right now. And, oh, my goodness. I mean, this hook's going to be coming through. Nightlight and Zaka, they need to heal up. They need to get rid of the Noed, which is right no, it here. Is here. It's right uh, here. And, and the best part, the best uh, part is... Oh, no. It's just... The, the best part is there's no best part. I was going to say, like, Bubbo placed it here with the knowledge that that's where the Noed is. Uh, how... Uh, I mean, Nightlight and Zucker can't leave. They know they can't leave. They have to try something here. I... I just don't know. I don't see a world in which unless Bubbo commits the throw of the century and gets $20,000 like directly shipped into his bank account for a throw right now. The only, it, it, the that, only throw that would... A win. Yeah, the only throw that would be possible now if he, if he blocks the entrance to the Noah totem for more than 10 seconds, not letting the survivors do, and therefore forfeiting the set, but he has no reason to block it since he can just in one. So yeah, there's really not anything uh. possible. Nightlight tried. It's very understandable now. And to everyone who will say, now what is Eternal doing? What are they doing? Well, this is their final yeah. chance. They have to do it. And if yeah. you get 4 k now, or if you leave with five stages out of the door, really doesn't matter because you lost the set point so eternal coming back here and trying and now potentially getting fully 4k here is not a throw at all it is just them trying their absolute hardest we have the six stages here so we are going for it and yet eternal is pulling another surprise and taking so many stages out of the door potentially here they were about to six stage this um after which would have still been very very impressive royalty will go on to the hook here and nightlight and zaka will leave the trial ladies and gentlemen i guess you have been here today for a very very rare accomplishment by a team that is not even elysium usually elysium is handled as the hunter of eternal and it wasn't even elysium it was ariandel and they are playing out of their mind they are playing so so strong and they are actually beating eternal and they are beating eternal with a two Oh, what an insane performance. They will move back towards four wins and therefore being the only team that has four wins at the moment compared to the midfield of the standings. So Ariandel is safe on the third spot in the standings. One win ahead of everyone else. Clean to go into the playoffs in three weeks if they are now not starting to throw things left and right. Above that, Elysium with a 5-1 and Eternal now with a 5-1 as well. So it is no longer clear who's leading the standings. Eternal will stay at the top of the standings with a 20% 
15% better set win ratio than Elysium, but since there is no win ahead of Elysium anymore, Elysium might be able to use the remaining week 7, 8 and 9 to go and take the first spot in the standings. Now you might say, well, if playoffs are top four, why does it even matter who makes it in top four? Well, in the past, we have seen teams trying to lose the set intentionally because they were gambling who's playing against who in the playoffs. And so we changed it. And the team that is on the top of the standings gets to decide their opponent in the semifinal and the other teams are playing against each other accordingly. So being at the top of the standings gives you this huge advantage that you can pick who you're facing in the semifinals.